Hi, and welcome to part four of season one, episode nine, Wheels Rewatch. This might never actually end because I still have 22 minutes to go and I might actually keep pausing. So who knows how many parts this might end up being? But this is a current episode. It has a lot of my favorite characters and a very interesting moment. So who knows? But let's see. Once again, I still want fan fiction. I'm going to interrupt myself really quickly before we even get started. I want more fan fiction of middle school interaction between these characters and grade school interaction and kindergarten and preschool and summer vacations interaction because they were at the same camps together, played on sports teams together, and blah, 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 because someone had to know Lucy beforehand. And they must, some of these people must have known each other before high school. Unless they all moved to Lima at the same exact time. That is all. Double turn is to just go for it. You push with the right. Okay, let's see. Weird seating pattern here. It's Artie facing them. Then in these weird semicircle things. Brittany, Finn, Rachel, Quinn, Matt. Back up... Behind Finn is Mercedes, Mike, Tina, Kurt, and uh, Puck. And then over at the piano is Brad, and Schuster is, of course, not doing his lesson, following the lesson of the children this week, which he should have been in a wheelchair too, but whatever. Here you go. Oh, and Santana's between Rachel and Kurt's turning so fabulously and using the camera to spot himself. Okay, guys, uh, take five, all right? Matt's, do oh, that's like, and Mike's like, yay, spin! Rachel versus Kurt in the big solo. Kurt and his scarf. Careful. Disrespect the chair. Kurt's, hmm. I really admire you. I had no idea how difficult this was. It's just like you. It's your stutter. You don't really notice it after a while. Oh, okay. uh, how did it happen? Oh, look, she forgot about yeah, stuttering. About it. And then she you had to stutter once in my bed. She was fine, but I've been in the chair for six. Okay, well, that's what she was saying. Yeah, I'm sorry. Artie, that was. Yeah, no. Um. Kurt. Kurt, 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 Kurt. I like the inter Interposition. I can never say words correctly, but you know what I mean. The compare and contrast of these scenes together. Yeah, who's this? People, why would you call someone and say that? And Bert's getting pissed off because someone's calling him and saying that. Because in his mind, someone calling him and saying that does not equal good things. Not because his son's gay, but because, what do you mean my son's a fag? Why are you calling and tell me that? Is that some kind of threat? That's where Bert's mind is. Is this a threat? Is someone threatening my kid? I don't want someone threatening my kid. What is this? What's wrong with this machine? I hit it. I have massive need for spy gravity. I hit it. Means I'm gonna win. That's great. It's good for you. Is how long until the damn coffee's ready? Come on. I got a phone call this morning. Birds. The anonymous guy. It was some dude telling me my son was a fag. Oh. Well, that's not a big deal. I get that all the time. Yeah, but I don't. I'm a Kurt and I. I try to do right by you. You know, open some doors. You know, what father wouldn't do that for his kid? I have such pretty eyes. Be out there with, with all this glee club stuff. I just. I don't want you to get hurt. See, he's so terrified for so his own sake. Don't want me to audition for this art. No, no, let me be clear, all right? No one pushes, pushes the, the hummels around, around, especially cowards on the phone. Sometimes I just, I wish your mom was still around, you know? 
Uh, she was better at you know, handling this kind of thing, you know, handling me. Oh, you do it. Put some on the, the cool air, the high seat. Yeah. I love your relationship. Damn, Chris Culver, your little baby face. He's had a bad mushroom. Good as new. Thanks, Sam. You're the only one who's willing to help me. I'm really nervous about the diva up tomorrow. Don't be. I don't want to win at a charity. I want to win the sober because it's right for the club. I really think that the judges at sectionals will find a female version of Defying Gravity much more accessible. Why are you selling yourself? I don't think that's gonna happen. Why don't you guys just make this a duet? Yeah, you might want to work on that. That's a reassuring thing. I like you. Finn, you're in a relationship and supposedly the father of someone's child. Please talk. Okay, have your way. No, you stay. I need a witness. Do you know what this is? Oh, it's just a past two notice. My mom gets them all the time. Right. But if this sonogram bell doesn't get paid, it's not your phone that's gonna get cut off. You will get cut off. You need to help me with this, then, or else we're gonna go our separate ways. I wonder if by this, no, they're not, because it's said how later. Not necessarily. Okay. I'm pausing this for one second. So, Finn fixes Rachel's wheelchair. And then Rachel gets the inspiration to help him find a job. Except... See, her inspiration is for him to pretend to be handicapped to get a job! No! You know what you should have done, Rachel? You should have... Been to Kurt, taking him to Kurt and saying, Hey, Kurt, do you think your dad has a job opening for someone to be in a, learn how to be a mechanic at the shop? That would have made sense. Why can't I have fan fiction where that's what Rachel does and that's how uh, Bert meets Carol and by hanging out with Finn, I just, why is that your rational choice, Rachel? Have him pretend to be handicapped to get, okay, I'm not ranting, I'm not ranting. Finish this episode soon. Because that is not a logical progression of thought. Santana is so not understanding or caring about these things. This is amazing. How can I lose their angel resume? Their objective, you want one? No, no, thanks. I don't want to take it away from a paying customer. Oh, no, she's just high. This is a manic angel resume. She couldn't cook it all. Please tell me you're not letting Quinn eat any of this. I knew I had to do something to help Quinn out with our baby. I don't know what kind of stuff you need for a baby that's still in your stomach. Bottles, diapers, that kind of thing, I guess. But my baby mama was going to get it all. To make sure that happened, I used the two things I know the most about. Lime and crime. Is there a lot of pain, though? The doctor said the shark fractured my spinal cord. This is why I don't go to the aquarium. I'm going to give you as much as you want, 20 cents on the dollar. I don't put in enough to get you a listening, just enough to give you a wicked case of the munchies. That's why they keep coming back for more. You see? I told you I'd make a great dad. Faster. Harder. Those better be tears of joy, Becky. Faster. Harder. Okay, stop it. Becky, this is terrible. I tried, Coach. This is really hard. You think this is hard? Try auditioning for Baywatch and being told that they're going in another direction. That was hard. Get the showers. It's cooked. <laughs> thing is, is that I think she's actually struggling to be her usual Sue self with Becky because of the reminder. But she's doing it, and Schuster's in the background going, she's being mean. Which is interesting, she says she's not. Sue, you are unbelievable, and you are a terrible sight. You might try breathing through your nose sometime. If you were a sniper, I'd have already radioed in your coordinates. Just like in the park. I'm not going to let you bully that girl. Oh, I bully everybody. Will swear, Rose. Yeah, but this is different. She's not like everybody else. 
want you to listen to what you just said, will you? You're asking me to treat this girl differently because she has a disability. But actually, it seems to me she just wants to be treated like everybody else. Why are you doing this? Because I know you. And you're up to something. You don't know the first thing about me. He knows school you, so sadly school you is kind of a Oh And before we get on to this competition, because I'm going to pause this video soon, random fanfiction that I'd like, because this is Glee and fanfiction, and hell, I like reading interesting story. Glee said in a polyamorous universe where having multiple lovers is acceptable. How that would have changed various seasons of Glee. For example, Quinn probably would have openly welcomed uh, Rachel to the relationship in order to keep Finn. And then, Puck probably would have joined that. Dear God, the possibilities of if the polyamorous relation, I can't say the word, were perfectly acceptable in this universe, the show would be quite different. Although, would Terry have accepted Emma into the relationship? No, I'm sorry, I just thought of that would be horrifying if Terry was in a relationship with Will, who was also in a relationship with Emma. Terry would still destroy Emma to be first wife in her mind. Ooh. Maybe then... Hmm. Interesting thought patterns, but uh, this is the end of part four of season one, episode nine, Wheels, the rewatch. Get ready for part five, and who knows how many others. Toodles!